What if I told you that your favorite data company is betting big on air travel? Yes. And if you don't buy into it now, you might miss out on the biggest opportunity in the world. Well, maybe not quite. There is an interesting piece of news out here, which looks so small that it's easily overlooked. But there is actually a huge opportunity here for Palantir. So today we're going to explore Palantir's recent investment into surf air mobility. Now that investment was $1.5 million, which might not sound like a lot for a company of Palantir's size. But there's a fascinating story behind this move, which actually shows this could be a billion dollar plus opportunity. So stick around. This investment has the potential to transform an entire industry. We're talking AI-powered flight operations, electric aircraft, and a complete overhaul of regional air travel. And guess who's at the heart and center of this? Of course, it is Palantir. So in the next few minutes, we're going to break down why this investment could be a game changer for Palantir and investors who pay attention like you. We're going to delve into the strategic implications, the tech behind it, and why this could propel the stock to new heights. And I'll show you exactly to what heights on the chart as well. And if you're worried about the quality of this research, well, Winston, my trusty golden retriever, sniffed out, sniffed out all of it for us, and he's got a pretty large nose, so it must be promising. He's also the one who sniffs out our trades every week, and we trade about two hours a week, something like that. We're up about 94% so far this year. So if you want to learn Winston's golden three rules to trading, then come and join our free beginner trading training, which is part of our mission to make a million people financially free. How? Just head over to felixfriends.org slash training. Grab yourself a seat and show up. Now, let's embark on this journey through Palantir's sky high ambitions. Palantir has made an investment into surf air mobility. They scooped up 1.2 million shares at about $1.25 each. And I know what you're thinking, that doesn't sound like a big investment. But the purchase wasn't Palantir's first rodeo surf air. They've actually bumped up their total stake to now 2.7 million shares. And it isn't just a share purchase. Palantir has been providing services to surf air, and in return, they're getting either shares or cash. A rather clever move, if you ask me. But what exactly is surf air mobility? Some sort of surfer app? No, not quite. It's an LA-based company that isn't your average airline. They're at the forefront of electric aviation and regional air travel. Imagine taking an existing aircraft and giving it an eco-friendly makeover. That's exactly what Surf Air Mobility aims to do. They're developing electric and hybrid powertrains, as in motors, to upgrade existing aircraft, making regional air travel more efficient and allegedly more sustainable. So it's giving old planes a new electric hybrid lease of life. They also operate a regional air mobility platform where you can see scheduled routes, on-demand charter flights, and so on. And they are the proud parent company of Surf Air, a charter flight operator, and two airlines you might have heard of, Mukulele Airlines and Southern Airways Express. The grand vision, building a regional air mobility ecosystem that connects communities. That's it. So it's creating a web of sort of electric air routes across the country. What about their numbers? Well, they've seen some very impressive growth. Revenue has skyrocketed almost 400% over the last 12 months, 111 million revenue as of Q2. But it isn't all smooth sailing or flying, as we should perhaps say. They're facing some financial turbulence. They carry a lot of debt. They're not profitable. The operating margin is minus 153%. So, What's the deal? Their stock performance has been on a very wild fly too. We're talking about 80% down, <laughs> um, something like that, but 60% return in the last month. So pretty unpredictable. And if you look at the stock chart, I pull it up here on the screen for you here. There's that lovely breakout. Very, very nice. The only thing is you see this purple line here? That's the 150-day moving average line. I always say nothing good happens underneath the 150-day. So I wouldn't touch it until it gets there, which would be at around $3 right now. But massive volume here on Friday. 
though not the most bullish of candles despite being 12% up, lost almost all of the day's gains. So a lot of people trying to exit, which is exactly what you get when you have a stock chart that looks like this. Basically, everybody is a loser and everybody sells when the stock goes up. So be very cautious on this if you are a short-term trader. But Surf and Palantir have been working together since 2021, with Palantir deploying operating software. And it's a partnership that's been actually quietly growing. Now, you might be wondering why a company like Palantir, who works with the largest of the companies in the world, is suddenly interested in a teeny tiny company with planes. Well, this isn't just a flight of fancy for Palantir. You see, Palantir has built a reputation for turning complex data into actionable insights. They've done it for governments, they've done it for big corporates, and they are setting their sights on the wild blue yonder. And this move into aviation tech isn't just about diversification for them, it's about applying the AI and data analytics to an industry ripe for transformation. Think about it. Aviation is all about optimizing routes, managing resources, and making split-second decisions. And that sounds like exactly what Palantir is very good at. Together with Surf Air, Palantir is developing something called Surf OS. It's an AI-powered operating system for the entire advanced air mobility industry. We're talking about software that could optimize everything from flight routes to maintenance schedules, all while reducing wastage and making things more efficient. And if you believe that air travel is going to really get transformed with these self-flying drones, you know, Eve tolls all over the place, you'd be flying at a much, much lower cost than a traditional plane, which is what I think is coming, then to be the operating system of that is sweaty, pretty sweet. There is a stock that I used to invest in called Sabre, S-A-B-R, and they run just the flight bookings for much of the world's airlines. It's a tremendous business. I think it still is, but it never really recovered from the COVID disaster. But it was a classic sh pick and shovel business. And I think that's what Palantir is trying to establish here. Be the shovel, be the booking system, be the operating system for an entire new industry. Now let's talk numbers. According to recent industry reports, the global commercial aviation market is set to soar from about 800 billion to 1.1 trillion by the end of this decade. That's pretty exciting growth. But here's where it gets interesting. Airlines typically spend about 2.5% of their revenue on IT and software. Might not sound like a lot, but it does add up when your market's that big. So let's do some quick maths. 2.5% of 1.1 trillion gives us a total addressable market, or TAM, of 27.5 billion for aviation technology. That's a pretty big pie, and it's enough to make even Palantir's investors' eyes water. So how does Palantir fit into this? Well, given their strong position in data analytics and AI and their long-standing collaboration with Airbus and the fact that they're powering the most advanced drones in the world in, you know, war zones and everything else. And assuming their partnership with Surf Air Mobility takes off, we could see conservatively that they might maybe capture, what, 10, 20, 50 percent of the market? Well, let's just be conservative and say 12 and a half percent. If you crunch those numbers, we get about 3.4 billion for Palantir by 2030. But there is more. Remember, Palantir is taking equity stakes in companies like Surf and Mobility. That strategy could add an extra 20% to that TAM. So they're basically getting a bonus slice of pie after already having the revenue. And when we factor that in, we're looking at a potential addressable market of about 4 billion here for Palantir in this sector. And that is more than pocket change. Very, very significant revenue that could help Palantir's business really take off. Maybe you think it already has, but I think it hasn't even started yet. Now, of course, a lot can happen and, you know, you don't know if this is going to work and so on, but they're learning. And that's why I like this startup investing strategy. For almost no money, you get to learn the industry. You get to understand what happens. Hey, and maybe it's going to be, I don't know, a big airline or one of the big, you know, manufacturers who takes the the whole thing. But then you're going to knock on their door and go, hey, guys, we've done this for five years. We know all the data. We've got the operating system. You want in. We could be up and running in a week. That's exactly, I think, why they're doing what they're doing here. And if we look at the stock chart for Palantir right here, and I'll give you a little bit of an insight into what's actually going on here. So 
in trade vision.io which is a software that we built to basically share Wall Street quality data uh, you've got the simplified chart here and it gives us an indicator basically green says buy red says exit it's obviously just an indicator you still need your own risk management and so on and we called here the last buy at 26 c59 but that's not actually what i want to show you i want you to click on the see more advanced chart and there is a free uh, week's trial to this software if you want to play around with it and then it opens up something that looks a little bit more complex but what i really want to show you is and you can zoom in a bit on this you see that green bar here you see these green bars they are actual positions they are actual options positions call positions to be precise and a green bar acts as resistance. So at the moment, we have resistance at 42, which is okay because we're trading at about $39. So there's about $3 upside room till we might hit our head. But what's really intriguing is if you go out further into the month, that $42 resistance disappears and it moves all the way up here to 45. So it goes from where it was all the way up to 45. And I like that. You see, why do I like that? Because it means the market is seeing upside for Poland here. And what you really want to watch out for is every week watch these lines and watch if they are going higher. If you get a breakout and your lines here don't move, it means the market doesn't believe it and you're very likely to come back down. So it's a really nice bit of data that you can look at that's going to give you some insight that well, Wall Street certainly looks at, but you probably didn't even know existed. And that's okay. That's why we put it out there. So check it out uh, on tradevision.io and, and play with it alone. Ask me questions on it if you like. And I'm excited by this. And I know these are long-term investments. These are long-term plans for companies like Palantir. But the greatest companies in the world were built because the founders and management thought three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years ahead. And that's what I like about them. And it will cross some ups and downs in the stock price. But I think in the long run, these guys have got something going on. So, um, of course, not financial advice, just, you know, Winston in my research and digging in thoughts. But check it out and come and join us on Wednesday evening for a beginner trading training. Learn how we're up 94% so far this year, doing very, very little. And how much fun it could be if you understood exactly the same system that I'll teach you over there. All the best. You know that there are small companies trying to steal part of the NVIDIA pie, and if they succeed, well, it could be like investing in Microsoft or Apple in the very 